Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. I have finally finished this book. It did take me the better portion of the summer, but I have finished it. And I have a lot of thoughts on it, both about the book itself, also just about all the associations that I think come with this book, just in popular culture, just in general societal conversations. If I hold up Lolita, I think a lot of people have an opinion on what it is, whether they've read it or not. I think a lot of people have a lot of preconceived notions about Lolita, and I think the role that it's taken on in sort of society and sort of what people think it is has become very twisted from the original novel, and I just want to talk about it because I think it's a very interesting phenomenon, and I think it says a lot just about society in general, the sort of role that this novel has taken on. We are jumping ahead because I just want to start by my general thoughts on Lolita as a novel, just putting aside sort of larger issues, societal expectations surrounding this novel, I first just want to talk about Lolita as a novel. So if you don't know, Lolita follows an aging man, Humbert Humbert, and when we open it is as if he is writing his testimony is what he's coming across as. And as we go further, we realize that this is his story of his obsession and pursuit of a 12-year-old child who is Dolores Hayes, but who he dubs Lolita. And it is very graphic in the way that it dives deep into his pedophilic mind. And so that is the main center of the story in terms of plot. In terms of the construction of the novel, he is writing it out as a testimony. And so I think one of the major things that surrounds Lolita as a novel is the question of unreliable narration. We are getting all of these events through Humbert's perspective. And so when you are in the mind of a pedophile, that brings additional layer of unreliability because of course any first person narration is unreliable, but this is through the mind of a pedophile. And so everything that we are getting has that colored frame. So we are seeing everything through his eyes. It brings its whole own set of issues, which I will get into a little bit later. But just to start with my general thoughts on Lolita, just because I do think this novel is just incredible. And I think a lot of people, myself are included, are hesitant to read it because of the subject matter. And that is completely understandable. I completely understand why you would not want to read this book. It does detail these crimes that Humbert is committing and it, you're getting in his mind and so it's very disturbing. So I completely understand if any of that would make you say, okay, I don't want to read this. I too was hesitant to read this. But I will say the reasons why I was hesitant is because I thought, because of preconceived notions about this novel, that this would be a glorification maybe of pedophilia. And so I was very put off. But I will say now that I've read it, that's not what it is. What it is is just a novel of unreliable narration, I think. And I think it is masterfully done. What Nabokov is doing with questions of unreliable narration is the best I think I've ever read, actually. I can't think of anything that matches this in terms of just handling an unreliable narrator. I've read other unreliable narrators that I've enjoyed in the past, but this, I think, I've called it a masterpiece before, but I do think it is just a masterpiece of what he's doing with unreliable narration. Every sentence can be questioned. And I think there's a lot of layers to Humbert's unreliable narration because first of all, he's writing it down. So he's telling what he wants to tell. But then at the same time, it's kind of uncertain whether he himself sees things the way they truly are. So there's that layer. So I think that is masterfully done. The other thing that I really want to just emphasize is that the style of writing in this book is just unlike anything I have ever read. Every sentence just feels like Nabokov is playing with language in such an incredible way and just having so much fun with the English language and just creating just art with every sentence. I know usually I read books and I'm like, okay, that's a work of art in totality, but it's rare that I read a book and I'm like, every single sentence feels like a little piece of art. I feel like I could flip to any page in Lolita and be like, wow, that is such an interesting simile, that is such an interesting metaphor, wow, what interesting wordplay, or what interesting stream of consciousness. I could just flip to any scene in this book, and I think that it would do that, which is rare that I can say for any book, I think. So that is also very impressive. So if you have been hesitating to read Lolita, maybe because of what you've heard about the subject matter, I would just keep in mind that it is not glorifying Humbert's crimes, and I would also just really emphasize that I do think it is a masterpiece and I'm so glad I read it. It did take me a while to read just because I think every sentence is packed with so much, 
but I do think it was well worth the journey. I really enjoyed it and I probably will reread it in the future. Not anytime soon because it took me so long, but I would highly, highly recommend Lolita is the first thing that I just wanted to get out there. Now we are getting more into the weeds, which is sort of what I really wanted to talk about in this video, just because I think it's so interesting how this book has taken on a life of its own completely apart from the book, I think. And I think there are a lot of different reasons for that. But the first thing that I just want to make clear is that nowhere in this novel does it glorify pedophilia. Nowhere does it do that. I think adaptations have made it seem like it does that. And I think common conceptions can sort of be that it does do that, but it does not. And I want to make that very clear because I do think that even just looking at this cover is already I think something that was not intended by the author. I have looked it up, Nabokov did not want any pictures of young girls on the cover of Lolita. Since then if we just look at all of the covers that have come out it all pretty much all of them have young girls and none of them have what he originally wanted on the cover which just was a scene of an American landscape. He did not want young girls on the cover of this book. Clearly we have departed from that and so already I think that leads to sort of the misconceptions that we have about Lolita. But I do not think that any of it is glorifying Humbert's crimes in any way. I don't really want to dive too deep into authorial intention just because I think that that, I don't know, I don't like doing that in general. I think asking like what did the author intend is it's honestly, I don't know, it's just one of those very big questions that sometimes you hear asked in high school classrooms and that's when students end up not liking studying literature because I don't know what they intended. But there is a sort of paragraph that Nabokov did write himself. It is in an afterword in my book that I wanted to read just to kind of add to the fact that I don't really want to dive deep into exactly what Nabokov intended because I think that asking that question is not the most productive. So I'm just going to read this paragraph just sort of as my explanation. He himself said, there are gentle souls who would pronounce the Lita meaningless because it does not teach them anything. I am neither a reader nor a writer of didactic fiction. And despite John Ray's assertion, the Lita has no moral in tow. For me, a work of fiction exists only insofar as it affords me what I shall bluntly call aesthetic bliss. That it is a sense of being somehow somewhere connected with other states of being where art, curiosity, tenderness, kindness, ecstasy is the norm. There are not many such books. And so I think based on that, I think this is more of an artistic pursuit for Nabokov and I don't want to get into the moralization except for the fact that I don't think the intention was to glorify pedophilia, which I think has become the conception these days. And it's for a specific reason, which is what I want to get into next. And that is the adaptations of Lolita. Now, I'm going to be fair and preface this by saying that I have not seen any Lolita adaptation. I have only seen photos, I have seen clips, and I have heard things about them. But I think what I can gather from articles that I've read and just photos that I've seen is that it very much changes the original subject matter and does start to glorify Humbert's actions in a way. And I think that's where the general societal conception has been that this is a story about an older man who just loves a young girl. Because if you look at photos from other adaptations, they often make Lolita older, first of all. She is 12 in the book. She is only 12. It is very clear that she is only 12. She is in no way a teenager. Even if she was a teenager, it would still be a crime and it would still be wrong. I'm going to put that out there. But she is 12 in the book when Humbert is pursuing her. So that's the first thing that they change. They make Lolita older, which I think is strange. It becomes a different story. Still wrong because Lolita is still a minor, still a child, but they do change her age first of all. I believe in one of the adaptations Lolita is 15. The second thing that lends to that, and this is what I've seen from certain clips of Lolita adaptations. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I've watched clips. And what it looks like the clips are doing is making Lolita out to be the seductress. In the book, it is Humbert that sort of envisions her as the seductress. And she's just living her child life. She's just eating an apple and he's seeing her as like an Eve that's trying to seduce him. And it is very clear that it is twisted in Humbert's mind. But I think what happens when you try to adapt a book with unreliable narration, because I don't want to say that it was like the director's intent to glorify it. I don't know much about that. I would have to look into it. I don't want to make that claim unsupported. But I think if you are trying to adapt a book with unreliable narration, it's very difficult to do that because 
it's just not as clear when it comes across your film. And so from the clips that I've seen, it looks like what we are seeing is from Humbert's point of view in which he is seeing Lolita as a seductress. But as a viewer, just watching that movie, I don't know, I think the sort of unreliable narration can get twisted and the general viewer can just think that Lolita is a seductress. I'm not quite sure if that makes sense. I know there's like a lot of layers to what I just said, but I do think that that's part of the reason why Lolita has gotten misconstrued into something that is completely not what the original novel is. In the original novel, it's very sick and twisted to read about because you can clearly tell that Humbert is taking this child, this very clear child, which is very clear throughout the novel, there are constant reminders, and that he is projecting sick fantasies onto her. He is projecting what he wants her to be. And even in renaming her Lolita, he's sort of warping her identity and making her into something that he wants her to be in this like ideal, sick, twisted vision that he has. It's very clear. I'm not sure it's as clear in the films just because I think what has happened and what I've heard in general is that there is a tendency to like sympathize with Humbert in the media. You just like search up Lolita. I didn't do like a deep dive into Reddit or anything because that would probably produce some weird results. I just went to Google if you just search Lolita. There are some strange entries that come up, I think. There is like a Lolita Wikipedia, and I believe that one refers to the novel as like Humbert's passion for Lolita, which already I think is a strange word to use. It didn't really seem like it was fully emphasizing that it is just him being a criminal abuser. That entry was weird. There was a Reddit entry, I'm not diving deep into subreddits or anything like that, there was a Reddit entry about someone asking if maybe Humbert is the victim and if we are just too hard on Humbert nowadays because of the Me Too movement. Which was a very, I don't know, this was a little startling to me just because I think no matter what time you are in, the way Nabokov wrote this book is that this is a criminal. He is pursuing a child, he abuses a child, he does so many criminal acts and I don't think you can twist it in any way to make Humbert into the victim. If anything, I think Humbert even knows that he is destroying Dolores' life and so I don't see how you could twist it that way but I think maybe like movies have made it seem like he is sort of just a romantic hero that just is in love with the younger girl which I think we've also seen in other sort of media representation, just the glorification of much older men with minors sometimes in TV shows and movies and things like that. And so I think it's a larger phenomenon where that has been glorified in the media. I think the original novel, you can clearly see that it is portrayed as a crime. Humbert is portrayed as a sick individual and you can clearly tell that. And I think part of the interesting thing about it is that throughout the novel, Humbert is clearly trying to present himself as the victim and he is trying to present himself as maybe this just tragic figure. But I think any reader can see right through it, and I think that is very, very purposeful on the Bakos part. So that's also where I think no part of this is glorifying Humbert as a character. I think no reader would be fooled. I think it is just an exploration and unreliable narration, as opposed to actually trying to convince the reader that Humbert is the victim. But I do think just everything from book covers to just general, I think, sayings have like crept into society. I know like Lolita played a part in the show Pretty Little Liars in a very strange way where one of the characters like wanted to be Lolita. And I think there are a lot of different things in the media that have just twisted this original source material into something that's very strange and disturbing and in no way is in the original novel. And so I just wanted to talk about all of that. And I just wanted to end by saying that I am so glad that I finally read the original source material because it is so skillfully done. And I think I also had like misconceptions about what Lolita even was. But now that I've read it, I just see that it is just sort of a work of art and a work of genius. And so I just wanted to put all of that on the table because this is a book that really just... I think out of any book, maybe not any book, but it is one of the books that is most 
just misconstrued and twisted and people have an idea about it, but maybe haven't read it. And so I just wanted to talk about it. I just wanted to put all of that out on the table. And I also want to open it up for anyone that has anything to say in the comments, because I would love to hear your thoughts on Lolita, whether or not you have read it. I think this is actually an interesting discussion if you've read it and also maybe an even more interesting discussion if you haven't read it, because what do you think when you think Lolita? If you haven't read it is what I would like to know. And then if you've read Lolita, I would like to know what you think if you read it. So before I get too much more rambly, because I can already feel myself going off the ramble train, I'm going to leave it here. Please leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.